morning. My name is uh, Francesco Montorsi, and my PhD is about uh, uh, localization and tracking for indoor environments, uh, especially. Uh, that is for any environment where satellite navigation is not available. In this presentation, I will talk uh, shortly about technologies and techniques uh, for positioning. Then uh, I will talk about uh, my contribution regarding modeling with experimental measurements for true systems, then uh, localization algorithms, which uh, I've been studying, and finally, some navigation algorithms. The difference between localization and navigation in this context is uh, that in localization system, the aim is to find the position of an, ob an object or a person uh, called the agent, which is static, which doesn't move. Uh, while in navigation system, you want to track the position of a moving agent. So you need to uh, continuously estimate uh, uh, the position of the agent. Regarding techniques and technologies for uh, positioning, uh, as you know, there is uh, uh, the well-known uh, global positioning system, GPS, and there are other na satellite navigation systems as well, uh, which have a long uh, tradition in history. But uh, in, uh, uh, of course, there are um, places like indoor environments, tunnels, underground environments, where the signal is not uh, available. So uh, a certain number of, uh, terrestrial, um, of technologies for terrestrial uh, localization system have been developed uh, in uh, recent years. Uh, in my PhD, I've been focusing on uh, radio techniques and the national navigation system techniques. Uh, as you can see, there are a number of technologies for passive localization, that is uh, uh, technologies for system where the agent is not cooperative, it doesn't want to be localized. So uh, these technologies are mostly for military purposes. And then uh, there are technologies uh, which are proximity based, that is system where there is a large number of fixed devices installed uh, in the environment, which may be uh, ultrasound or infrared beacons or RFIDs. And uh, this kind of sensor give only a binary indication of proximity uh, between the agent and the fixed device. Uh, I've not been considered this system, I've been considered a system where the sensor gives uh, continuous measurements which allows you to estimate the position of the agent using a lower number of fixed devices or like in the case of uh, national navigation system, INS, uh, no fixed devices, uh, fixed devices at all because the, it, it employs a different kind of uh, measurement of positioning approach. Regarding modeling, um, my first activity was about uh, uh, modeling of uh, uh, a kind of error, the bias, uh, in uh, ultra-wideband localization systems. Uh, this system work uh, um, with a simple principle, which is uh, uh, there, there is a number of fixed devices whose position are known, which are called anchors, and then there is an agent uh, which, whose position uh, needs to be found, um, which communicates wirelessly with these anchors. Uh, it sends uh, uh, radio signals and uh, he measures the time of arrival of the electromagnetic waves uh, by, by the knowledge of the time of flight uh, of the radio signals with respect to all available anchors, he can uh, find uh, the distance uh, his distance with respect to the, to the many anchors. And finally, he can multilaterate his position. That is, he can find the intersection of circles, which gives uh, uh, his position. Uh, what's the uh, typical problem in this kind of system? Uh, the propagation in case of non-line of sight. Uh, that is, uh, if there is a, an obstruction between a certain anchor uh, and the agent, uh, then uh, um, the time of arrival which uh, the agent estimates is biased. Uh, that is, there is a constant positive, positive offset which depends on, um, on, the, uh, on the presence of the obstruction which slow down the electromagnetic wave. Um, this results in a wrong distance estimate of the agent and then in a localization error. So, um, we, we need a different, uh, we need to correct this problem and our approach involved a measurement campaign 
where uh, no line of sight bias has been uh, uh, characterized. Uh, we employed uh, this model, which is classical, and uh, you can see that there is uh, the measured uh, time of arrival, tau, and then there is the real transmitter and receiver distance, uh, the Gaussian noise random variable, and then the bias, uh, the non line of sight bias random variable, B, uh, which is what uh, uh, we wanted to characterize uh, from a statist uh, statistical point of view. <clears throat> so our approach involved uh, the use of uh, two um, hardware devices, two radios, ultra wideband radios, that is radios transmitting on a large portion of the spectrum with uh, very low power. And uh, these kind of radios allowed us to uh, record the entire waveform of the received signal and to extract some uh, signal features like uh, the maximum signal amplitude, the mean access delay, the delay spread, and so on. Uh, our result is that uh, there is a good correlation between the non line of sight bias, you can see on, in this slide uh, on the y axis the non line of sight bias, and uh, some features like, for example, the received amplitude. You can see that uh, uh, N loss links uh, have very different correlation with, uh, with respect to uh, line of sight links. So uh, the idea is that uh, by measuring uh, some features of the received signal, I can uh, estimate the bias and compensate uh, for its presence whenever I'm in non-line of sight uh, condition. So uh, we proposed uh, some uh, estimator of agent position exploiting uh, uh, the multidimensional statistical characterization of uh, the non-line of sight bias. Um, and uh, our results showed uh, that it is possible to mitigate this, uh, this bias, but uh, this is a difficult approach because it is difficult to consistently achieve a gain in localization accuracy in all possible situations in all indoor environments. So uh, the, the, the result was that uh, perhaps uh, non line of sight bias detection is more robust that, uh, than non line of sight bias mitigation. Uh, regarding modeling, uh, we also did a, 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 mo a more comprehensive model for localization system based on uh, received signal strength measurements. Uh, in this kind of system, the position of the agent is uh, found similarly to um, previous uh, type of system. In this case, however, the, the agent uh, <coughs> does not measure any time of arrival. It measures the uh, energy of the received signals uh, with respect to all available anchors. Uh, the, the energy of the received signal, the R RSS, can be uh, related to the distance of the agent uh, uh, with respect to all available anchors. And again, uh, once he knows his distance, he can multilaterate his position uh, to localize himself. Uh, a problem, again, in this kind of system is that is the presence of uh, obstruction, for example, walls in indoor environments, which uh, uh, absorb part of the signal energy. Um, thus, the agent measures a biased uh, RSS. Uh, in particular, um, it measures a lower uh, RSS. Uh, our approach in this case has been, uh, again, based on a, a measurement campaign uh, with uh, um, low frequency and narrow band radios. The photo is a little dark, but you can see the devices. And um, a large number of links have been characterized uh, in an indoor environment. Um, transmitting at 15 dBm, we could uh, study the effect of uh, multiple walls, uh, up to 10 walls, on uh, received signal uh, strength. In this case, uh, we didn't just characterize a term in, uh, in a statistical model. We proposed a new, uh, entirely a new statistical model, which relates, I won't go into the, uh, into the details, <coughs> but this model relates the uh, RSS measurements available for localization and a trial agent position. You can see that there, there is a number of model parameters which uh, need to be fitted uh, against experimental data. And uh, in particular, there is a function, there is a relation, which is NO, which is the number of obstructions between uh, the trial agent position and, the, uh, and a fixed anchor. 
um, to compute, uh, to evaluate this quantity, uh, the knowledge of the map is required. So we call this model map aware uh, statistical model. And uh, of course, uh, this probability uh, can be exploited for agent positioning because uh, if I compute this probability varying the trial agent position uh, um, inside the map, uh, and then I take the, the position which maximizes this uh, statistical um, probability density function, then I can find the optimal agent position. Uh, in this slide, you can see the, the difference between uh, this mo uh, my model and the classical map unaware model. Where the map unaware model, uh, these plots are uh, plots of the previous uh, PDF and the um, classical PDF used uh, in literature. And uh, you can see that uh, the map unaware uh, system doesn't know about uh, any feature of the indoor environment of the map. So uh, the, the likelihood is smooth, but uh, is perhaps uh, is often uh, much less accurate than a map aware model, which uh, you can see is much more discontinuous and uh, reflects in a better way the indoor propagation uh, scenarios. And um, in fact, our numerical results uh, confirm that uh, map aware algorithms are uh, ge in general much better than uh, map unaware algorithms, uh, up to 60% more accurate. Uh, what's the, the price for this increased uh, accuracy? Complexity. Uh, a more complex model uh, results in more complex uh, localization algorithms. So in, in my PhD, I've been studying uh, the complexity of uh, localization algorithms. And uh, the first issue uh, with this kind of study is, uh, the, um, is how to quantify the complexity of, uh, of an algorithm. Because uh, in particular, when, when nonlinear uh, models and nonlinear algebra is involved, it is very difficult to uh, estimate the, the algorithm complexity. Uh, the, the, the algorithm may be input dependent. Uh, there are strong nonlinearities. Uh, so uh, the, um, our approach was to use a mixed simulation analytical approach in which the number of floating point operation have been computed and uh, weighted uh, and different types of uh, floating point operation have been uh, weighted to obtain a final complexity number which gives uh, an idea of uh, the complexity of the algorithm in mean on, on the average. In particular, based on uh, this characterization, uh, I've been proposing two uh, novel localization algorithms uh, with a lower computational complexity. Uh, the first one is a distance, uh, we co I called it uh, distance reduced domain, uh, because um, uh, the idea is simple. Uh, is, the idea is that uh, localization can be uh, done in two steps, a row step where uh, only the map unaware model, which is simpler, is used uh, to obtain a row estimate. And then a uh, uh, fine localization step where uh, the most accurate and the most complex model is used, but uh, uh, is used in a smaller search domain, thus reducing uh, computational complexity. Another approach is to reduce computational complexity by evaluating uh, the likelihood only on uh, some chosen points on the map. Mm, I won't go into the details. And then shrinking the domain uh, around the most likely position found uh, and run the full algorithm on, a, again, a reduced domain, reduced with a different uh, uh, criterion. In this slide, you can see the results in terms of accuracy and complexity of uh, these uh, algorithms. Uh, in the green boxes, you can see the map aware optimal estimators, uh, which are, of course, in general, show a lower localization uh, error. You, the localization error is uh, on the left, but uh, very high uh, computational complexity, as uh, shown in logarithmic, logarithmic scale uh, on the right. Then you can see on the blue boxes, uh, map and away estimator, estimators which uh, use, uh, always use a simpler model. And you can see that uh, these have uh, low computational complexity, but uh, uh, have much higher uh, localization error. Then you can see on the red uh, boxes the, the proposed uh, algorithms. We show 
uh, an accuracy which is, a, which is very similar to the accuracy of optimal estimators. They are suboptimal estimators, but the accuracy is very close to optimal estimators, but the complexity is uh, in general um, lower. In, in particular, it can be uh, 13 times smaller uh, than uh, optimal uh, solutions. So far, I've been, uh, I've been discussing localization algorithms based on statistical models. However, uh, statistical modeling is not uh, the only approach. Um, there is an approach which has uh, gained uh, much attention recently, which is uh, uh, called the fingerprinting, where non-statistical techniques are used. In particular, the localization is approached as a pattern recognition technique, uh, as a pattern recognition problem where there are two steps, an offline step where a large mm, database of, uh, of RSS measurements is uh, collected, collecting the signals uh, available from all anchors at uh, known places. And then there is an online step where uh, the online acquired measurements are pattern matched to the database. And the agent position is uh, uh, estimated as the position uh, which, which is closer in signal space to the online acquired measurements. We created a, we tried to create a, a um, comfortable setup to quickly acquire a large number of measurements for this kind of system. Uh, but uh, our setup showed that uh, uh, because of body shadowing and uh, different antenna orientation, even at a fixed position, as you can see, there, is, there are large uh, variations in uh, received signal strengths, which uh, complicates the, the problem uh, of uh, localization. So uh, in, in our results, we found that uh, statistical modeling uh, is superior uh, in our tested approach. Of course, uh, um, this would be nice to further develop and uh, further investigate. Any, uh, anyway, uh, I've been working also on uh, navigation algorithms, uh, in particular navigation algorithms based uh, on uh, inertial navigation systems. Uh, that is system where uh, the agent position uh, is acquired, is uh, estimated in a very different way respect uh, to radio system. In particular, uh, the agent is equipped with uh, an inertial uh, measurement unit, IMU, uh, which can be very small and compact. Uh, and then uh, some physical quantities are continuously measured and uh, summed together, integrated. And the measurements in particular are acceleration and um, angular velocity on three axes uh, in 3D. So uh, uh, the position is found in a relative way. I continuously integrate the accelerations of the agent and find this position with respect to uh, an initial position. Uh, what is the problem in this kind of system? Uh, the, uh, the sensor outputs are maybe affected by different type of uh, noise, uh, of uh, errors. Uh, since these measurements are continuously integrated at a high frequency, after a um, few minutes or even few seconds, uh, the agent position estimate may become quickly corrupted, uh, di disrupted uh, by these kind of errors. So uh, the typical solution is to employ a filtering technique. In particular, for example, uh, an extended common filter is commonly employed. And uh, our approach consisted in using an extended common filter uh, together with a large state vector uh, large because uh, we also try to keep track of uh, some of the sensor uh, uh, non-idealities, the sensor uh, problems, the biases, uh, which affect uh, uh, system performances because uh, affect they, they are present on the sensor outputs. So you can see that there, is a, uh, there are many quantities which are filtered and, and tracked. Uh, of course, the most important is the position of the agent. Um, anyway, uh, the, the most important uh, contribution uh, has been found to be the map awareness. Uh, as we saw before, uh, map awareness improves system performances. But uh, in a navigation system, it is particularly, particularly important because uh, the knowledge of the map imposes con uh, constraints on the agent uh, 
uh, trajectories. In particular, uh, the map uh, avoids, uh, uh, give, uh, tells the system that some trajectories are not allowed, for example, those crossing walls, of course. So, uh, w w um, a problem with uh, map awareness, however, is that uh, it is highly nonlinear. So, uh, the integration of map awareness in uh, filters uh, requires a, a very complex filtering uh, algorithm because extending common filter is a nonlinear filtering technique, but is uh, suitable only to semi-linear uh, processes, which, are, which can be easily uh, linearized. Uh, map awareness require um, uh, a filter which is capable to uh, which is capable of handling uh, highly nonlinear effects, uh, for example, particle filtering. Um, what we find is that uh, uh, the complexity of non uh, non Kalman techniques uh, quickly grows with uh, the state vector size. So, for our state vector. Uh, for the quantities uh, which we are interested uh, to track, the complexity is prohibitive. Uh, our approach was to, um, my approach, my, my idea was to use a different combination of filters. Um, this, uh, I call it a turbo-like filtering technique because uh, it resembles uh, uh, the structure and uh, the architecture of turbo equalization systems, where you have two system exchanging uh, um, estimates of input data. In this case, you have two, two filters, a uh, semi-linear and uh, non-linear filter, uh, which uh, exchange different uh, um, estimates of the uh, quantities of interest. Of course, uh, what is the, the, the gain? The gain is that this, this approach is, again, suboptimal with respect the, of, to the use of, uh, for example, a particle filter to handle the whole problem uh, at once. But uh, um, the gain is that uh, uh, the, low, uh, the complexity, the computational complexity is much lower. In particular, um, <coughs> in this slide, you can see, for example, the, the results applied to navigation, to agent navigation. And you can see that uh, uh, the red track uh, on this map is uh, the track estimated by a map and aware system. Uh, the system doesn't know the map. Uh, he has no idea of uh, walls and uh, of the building layout. So um, after a while, uh, sensor errors produce uh, drifting in the trajectory. Uh, however, by the now, uh, integrating the knowledge of the map, uh, thanks to the turbo filtering, uh, using, uh, employing the turbo filtering approach, you can see that uh, the green track is much uh, closer to the ideal uh, tracking performances and to the ideal track of the, of the agent. Uh, and uh, we found that it is capable of maintaining long time stability in tracking. And the nice thing is that uh, it, is, uh, uh, it has a computational complexity which is very close to the uh, computational complexity of map unaware systems. Um, uh, I conclude saying that uh, in this activity I've been, uh, I produced a um, real, usable uh, prototype for indoor lo localization and indoor navigation, which uh, employs uh, the, the IMU sensor, the inertial sensor, uh, in, on the foot of the agent, and then uh, the position is streamed uh, to tablets or whatever. Uh, these are my publication. If you have any question, uh, uh, thanks for your attention. Thank you very much for your talk. Questions? Um, as far as the novelty is concerned, you yeah. didn't say how much work uh, 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 about yeah. uh, map aware uh, localization and modeling is available in the technical literature. Yes, uh, usually um, uh, approaches in literature are map and aware. Uh, so this model we proposed uh, is novel. Uh, and is shown uh, on the left. And uh, mm, yes, it, it is novel and uh, allows uh, increased accuracy. Uh, this was the first instance of uh, uh, map awareness uh, in, in my PhD. Uh, then we, we, we I, I, I proposed two uh, novel uh, low complexity algorithms, 
uh, based on uh, this uh, statistical map aware modeling, and, um, which uh, results to have good performances and uh, lower complexity with uh, regards to optimal algorithms. Regarding fingerprinting techniques, uh, there are some statistical techniques which are, have been uh, introduced, but uh, uh, I didn't go into the details. And regarding uh, ma uh, navigation, uh, this uh, approach to filtering is novel. Um, there are other nonlinear approaches which try to lower computational complexity, but they are very different and uh, uh, not always uh, applicable, uh, in particular not applicable to this problem. So this approach is, uh, this filtering approach is novel. Okay, thanks again. Thanks. So the next candidate is uh, Mr. Luca Morassi.